Alright, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another episode of my FM21 stay with Ajax. We are here for the games against Heracles and the game straight after, um, which is against PSV. So this schedule right here, of course, the last time out we lost to Milan and to FC Utrecht. Um, after that, we lost to Willem 2 as well, so three losses back to back. We then beat Groningen 4-0 and Utrecht in the league 2-0. Then lost to Feyenoord 2-0, which really hurt, of course, uh, it being a rival game. And then we beat Nock 5-0, so a kind of a mixed bag of results. I'm hoping that this episode can be a little bit better, that we, we can pick up two wins. I mean, Heracles should be a pretty easy win. PSV is going to be a little bit tougher, but I think we have what it takes to get through that. So the league table is looking like this. We are one point behind AZ. Look at our goal difference, AZ goal differences, and then compare to the others. So only PSV, Feyenoord, AZ, and us have a goal difference above 20. And then AZ and us have 46 and 48. And then the others are below 10 or even in the minus. So you can already see that this season is going to be really a four horse race between AZ, us, PSV, and Feyenoord. With Feyenoord already being outsider, being 7 points behind us, uh, well behind AZ of course. We are on equal points with PSV, so uh, we do have to beat them, otherwise they will overtake us. So let's just get straight into the game against Heracles right here. We will use the attacking formation, and we will use these players as well. Onana in goal, Alvarez, Lecomte, Bermudez and Gvardiol, Regier, Thiago, Anthony, Serrano, Bushi and Gonzalez. So let's start with a, a little bit of, of sad news. And when I say sad, I say that I'm pretty pissed off and just annoyed in general with this um, with this piece of news. And it's concerning Anthony. And as you can see, it set the TRN right here. He's joining Barcelona at the end of the year. He had no interest in signing a new contract. I've tried about, I don't know, about five, six times. And there were a couple of other players as well. Uh, the players I mentioned, I think two episodes ago, uh, that said that they were going to leave at the end of their contract this year. Um, it looks like they're gonna keep their word and all of them are leaving um, I'm not sure if any other players have already signed a deal with another team I do know that Eriksa is gonna retire at the end of the year um, Dolberg hasn't um, yeah he Dolberg is leaving as well I actually forgot he is leaving oh no wait he hasn't signed a deal yet all right so I think it's only Anthony then uh, who has signed a deal already um, so yeah, it's sad. I am starting him still. Uh, we do still need him in the Champions League. Uh, but when we are leading uh, at halftime, I do stop him off uh, pretty much every single match. Because um, even though I do see his effect in, uh, on the team, the fact that he is just one of our best player, if not the best player in the squad. And he just helps the team massively. I am still of the opinion that um, if we don't need to use him... So uh, what I mean by that, if we are leading, if we don't need his his impact, then I won't use him because we don't have him next season. So I just want to be prepared in um, prepared for life without Anthony, basically. So uh, most of the time, it's Abro who then uh, gets subbed on uh, at halftime if we are leading. That is, so you'll probably hopefully see that. Uh, let's see, it it can be. Either Abreu indeed, or um, there's one other player that gets subbed on uh, sometimes. But as I said, hopefully you'll see that this episode, um, what I mean by that is hopefully we'll be leading at halftime. Hopefully in both matches even. Again, against Space Fate it's going to be tough. Against Heracles we should be uh, winning this quite easily, to be honest. But Heracles are on the attack right from the off and it... Uh, looks like they're gonna go for goal here in the early moments of the match seven minutes in and they do go for goal But Onana saved it. Onana still at the club right from the beginning a lot of players actually That we have still from the beginning of this save and that is one of the things that I actually absolutely love about this save M Most of the times when I would you when I do a save uh, offline before I started YouTube um, what I would do is just in the um, early seasons I would sell off all old players basically and then uh, the further we get into a save mostly about three or four seasons in I've already lost pretty much every one of the original players except for absolute world-class players and what I love about this save that I actually haven't done that I've done it a little bit uh, but not necessarily as much as I uh, would have done 
um, in the past with my own private saves. Uh, besides that, I've also brought back, of course, a lot of old ex-Ajax players. And I just love the fact that, our, that the Ajax level, if you know what I mean, is just still so high in the squad. Uh, because that really keeps me connected to the squad. Uh, of course, being an Ajax fan in real life, to have as many actual players in there uh, as I can. Uh, that's exactly what I want. Uh, having said that, the first half has already flown by. Uh, we are still nil-nil, so Anthony is not coming off just yet. We are going to fire up the squad. And we are going to sub off Gonzalez. Let's see uh, Traore put him on there. Uh, Anthony, as you can see, <laughs> he is uh, have, playing the best out of all of our players. And there we go, Nico Serrano. Thank you very much. A 13th goal of the season. We're leading 1-0 against Iraklis, 58 minutes in. We are going to still make that sub. And if it is like this in, in about 10 minutes, then I will sub off Anthony as well. Let's, let, let's get Lecomte off. He is on a yellow card. And let's get Anthony off now. He has done his job. We don't need him anymore for this match, hopefully. Um, Heracles won't score an equalizer. And there we go. I was going to say it's going to be 2-0, but Traore just narrowly misses the goal. PSV and Feyenoord both leading their games as well. AZ are still drawing 0-0. So as you can see, we are uh, we would be in first place if it's if it ends like this, uh, all of those four matches. Uh, but of course, we still have about ten minutes to play, and there we go, Rafael Santos Boré, of course, our ex striker, uh, has now scored the one nil, probably the winner for AZ, uh, right a couple of minutes before the end of the game. So let's fire the players one more time. Let's keep them focused. Uh, because they can't lose their focus in these final minutes. Uh, because I don't want to concede an equalizer. And Nico Serrano, assisted by Rosano Bushi, makes it 2-0. Five minutes before the end of the match. And that should be it. So all of the top four teams have won their match again. Guardiola has picked up a knock. I hope it's not nothing too serious. Uh, we do have a lot of players that can fill in for him. I mean, we have a lot of players that can fill, on, fill in for pretty much every position. But we do have those um, Champions League games coming up. And I don't want to miss him for those games. So there we go. That's the end of the match. Probably one last chance, but it's nothing. Wait, it's going to be a penalty. I think it's going to be a penalty, and that would make it 3 0. I hope that Nico Serrano will take it and he will get his hat trick. But first off, let's hope that it is going to be a penalty and that the VAR is not going to deny it. There we go. And it is a penalty, so let's hope Serrano is going to take it. He will take it, so let's you know, go for his hat trick. I think that's going to be his first senior hat trick for the club. It probably is. If he puts it away, that is. And he does. 3 0 right before the end of the match. His 15th goal of the season already. He is having an absolute amazing season. I mean, the last seasons, he had every time he had a player in front of him that was just a little bit better. This time around, it's a little bit different. He is. One of our best wingers right now, even though he would be a striker normally. Uh, but yeah, he is starting most matches. Guardiola only injured for three do only injured for three days. But yeah, Serrano is starting most matches. So to for him to get his hat trick and score all three goals against Heracles is exactly what we love to see. So that's a very good start to the episode, and I'll see you guys in just a second for that important game against PSV. And there we go, we are here for the match against PSV, of course it is February so you have missed the entire January transfer window. We've gotten in two players, both on a free, nothing too special but I do think we can sell them on for a profit, maybe one or two seasons in the future. Uh, when you look at the outs, um, well, <coughs> uh, there are a lot. So we sold Kenneth Taylor to PSV, um, I think he also signed, no he didn't, but we just sold him because he wasn't going to be good enough ever and of course... Being a player from the club, he hasn't cost us anything in the past, so I think it's a good sale. I don't think we would have used him any time in the future. As you can see, he has only played two games for us in the last four seasons. So, um, yeah, I think it's a good sale all in all. Sad to see a youth player of ourselves go, but as I said, he wasn't going to be good enough. So a lot of players loaned out. You can look at the names if you want to. Uh, two more players sold Gurgan Egger, uh, nothing too special again, one of the youth players. I don't think, uh, I don't know what we bought him for. We bought him for one and a half million, so we made a little bit of a loss on him. Uh, but to now pick up 325k uh, for him, I think that's good. Maybe we could have loaned him out a couple of seasons and then sold him. Uh, but yeah, we, we got him off the wage uh, balance and uh, I mean, not that he was earning that much, but 
we got him off, we got a little bit of money, so I think that's positive. And then Federico Seoane, I hoped to uh, be able to uh, keep him at the club, but he had set his heart on leaving. He was one of the players that did accept a contract offer for the end of the year to join Watford um, in... Are, are they in the Premier League? They are in the Premier League. They're actually not doing too badly being in 7th. Um, but yeah, he accepted contract offer for uh, to join them at the end of the year. And I said, well, we don't need you now. Just go now. We'll pick up 1.5 million euros for you and enjoy your life in Watford. So those are the only three players that we've sold. And again, a lot of players loaned out um, for who we've also um, picked up a little bit of money here and there. So good financial deals done. Um... So yeah, that was, that was the transfer window, short but sweet, nothing too much happening there. I mean, I don't think we need more players, so that's probably the biggest reason why there's not going to be a lot of activity. We've pretty much, uh, we pretty much have our team set for the next coming years, uh, except for people leaving that we don't want to leave, like Anthony, at the end of this year. Uh, I think that's the only reason for us to buy new players if one of our major players leave. Uh, which is happening of course in this season so I am going to check at the end of the year do we need a new winger um, you guys let me know as well if you have your opinion, opinion on that do we need a new winger do we have any suggestions probably not because we are only buying um, youth players from now on probably because the rest is getting too old um, but do we need a new uh, winger or can we just use somebody from our own youth system because of course we have a lot of uh, players in that position in every position so the team for today is going to be Onana, Markovic, Bermudez, Lecomte and Thiago. Kirsten and Regeer, Anthony, Gonzalez, Unovar and Bushi. We're using the 4-2-3-1, playing away from home against PSV. They are a good team. They have a lot of players um, loaned or bought from us, like Kenneth Taylor, who I just showed you guys. So it's going to be tough. It's definitely going to be tougher than Heracles, um, which was already... Uh, proving to be tougher for us than I expected with only beating them 3-0 but that is the reason why we are using the 4-2-3-1 not the 4-2-4 I think if we would use the 4-2-4 then we would get absolutely battered um, I don't want to see that happening and I did not know this but Azet is playing Feyenoord at the same time so the top four is playing each other let's hope that we can beat them and on one hand, I want Azet to be Feyenoord because I just want Feyenoord to not be close to the top. On the other hand, Azet is probably going to be our biggest rivals again for the title. So when you look at it like that, you would want Azet to, um, to drop points. And what is that? What was that defending? But no, why is it this allowed? Oh my god, Boshi, how did you go offside there? I don't know what the defense was doing there, but they gave Unuvar about 10 minutes to pick up the ball after he was tackled and pass it to Bushi, who was right next to him. But for some reason, Bushi decided to stray offside and not stay behind the ball like a normal striker would. Um, we should have been leading right now 1-0 already, but to that, because of that fact, we are not. It's still 0-0. Um, let's hope that doesn't come back to bite us in the ass later on in this match. So... Um, you guys possibly could be thinking it's February and Unifor can tackled again, again by Dino Seligin, who of course I don't I'm actually not sure if, if they loaned him from us or if they bought him from us, but he was our player. Anthony is gonna take the penalty kick here in the 18th minute. Please score it, Anthony. Do something before you leave, and he does. He makes it 1-0, 18 minutes in, and that's a great start to us. I mean we've complete we've been completely all over them. And I'm hoping that it can stay that way. Feyenoord picking up an injury, that's positive as well. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it is February. You guys sh uh, could be thinking, where is the youth intake preview? Um, yeah, don't don't get too excited again. I, I have changed my head of youth development. Um, I'm hoping that the preview is wrong, but it said it was a mediocre group of players. Um, having said that, a mediocre group of players for this Ajax team is still going to be probably better than most teams in this competition so even if they are not going to be good enough for our first team we can still sell them on for a couple of million euros um i think at least except for if they're really really bad i mean m usually what i would do with those youth, youth players is just sign everybody that is above three star potential so three and a half star and higher but I think what I'm going to do is sign the three star potentials as well uh, anything lower than that I don't think is worth it 
I think it's going to cost us more wages than it's going to earn us in the end in the future when we sell them. But three star and higher is, I think, definitely worth it. As Gosano Bushi makes it two nil three minutes after the break, and that nil nil uh, in Alkmaar uh, against Feyenoord is also exactly what we'd like to see. Feyenoord not winning, but AZ are dropping points. That is exactly what we need. The 2-0, I wasn't expecting that at all, uh, especially after last episode's poor results and the poor results in between. As Karen Dowell, no idea who that is, but assisted by Justin Clifford, makes it 2-1, so they get their goal back. Hopefully, they won't get another one. Uh, but yeah, especially after those matches and last match uh, against the Hagas, which was a little bit tougher than I would have liked. Um, I did not expect us to be leading 2-0, uh, but as you can see, of course, before I can even end my story, uh, it's already 2-1. They have picked up an injury, um, actually a player uh, that is also owned by us uh, picked up that injury. Uh, of course, Ben Sturm. Um, oh no, wait, he's not owned by us. He was from Bayern. We tried to buy him about, I don't know, about five times. <laughs> Uh, but either his wages were too high or Bayern wouldn't want to let him go. So he is out on loan at PSV. But he's a very good, uh, I think he's a center back. He's a very good player. Uh, I'm sad that we couldn't get him in. PSV did. But he is uh, injured right now. So uh, he's not of good use to them anyway. Daniel Mala, what was that? Oh my god, what an attack by PSV. I was so scared they were going to score the equalizer right there. Five minutes before the end of the match. They hit the post and in the end a good save by Onana and Enrique Gonzalez to save us in the end. Three and a half minutes before the end of the match. Anthony with a beautiful free kick right on the head of Gonzalez. Puts it straight into the almost empty net because their goalkeeper was completely out of position. And I'm not going to complain. We have the 3-1 lead. Five minutes of injury time but that should be uh, this game done for as Anthony could make it 4-1 and he should have done. That was a beautiful chance, a beautiful pass by Serrano as well, but he couldn't finish it. And uh, it was still 3-1. Um, not, again, not going to complain. It's a good, it's a good match uh, from both sides, actually. It's an exciting match as well. It's very close. Uh, PSV actually do have the upper hand a little bit. But there's the final whistle. Doesn't matter that they have the upper hand. We have picked up the win. And we pick up the three points and a good 3-1 win away in Eindhoven. I mean, again, as I said, that's not what I expected. I expected it to be a lot closer. Uh, Azet have picked up the win again in the last 10 minutes. And that's a player that they loaned from us uh, to give them the win in the end. So we are still one point behind Azet. Which is, of course, where we're going to end this episode. One point behind AZ in second place, but the gap between us and third and fourth should be a little bit bigger. Of course, Feyenoord and PSV both losing their games, obviously. So let's see as soon as this is progressed. Uh, there we go. We are three points ahead of PSV. We are nine points ahead of Feyenoord. Feyenoord are 10 points behind AZ. So um, yeah, a good episode, uh, I believe. Definitely the 3-1 win against PSV. Just the fact that we picked up 6 points is good uh, anyway. So I don't even have to think about where we're going to meet you guys for next episode. Of course it's going to be the second leg against Barcelona. Uh, it's the away leg. We first play at home. So the away leg and then either Heerenveen who are in ninth, or Ado who are in 8th. Uh, depending on uh, well the things that I explained um, in all the other episodes which I'm not going to go through again. I'm not going to bore you guys with that again. But it's going to be, of course, definitely the second leg against Barcelona next episode and then either one of those two games around it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe as well if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys for the Champions League knockout stages very soon. Bye-bye.